Here's a lesson for section 5.3, binomial distribution. So let's start off at looking at what a binomial distribution actually is. Um, before I explain what a binomial distribution is, let's first look at what a binomial experiment is. So just have a look um, at this section here. I'm going to explain to you what a binomial experiment is. So a binomial experiment, sometimes referred to as a Bernoulli trial, um, is an experiment where you have identical trials. The purpose is to discover the number of successes that will occur in n trials. So you've got a bunch of identical trials, and we're trying to figure out um, the probability of a certain number of successes. In a Bernoulli trial or a binomial experiment, there's always only two possible outcomes, either a success or a failure. Those are the only two possible outcomes for a binomial experiment. And the probability of success has to stay the same for each trial, which means the events have to be independent of each other. So those are the conditions that make up a binomial experiment. So in a binomial experiment, so now I'm reading up here, the number of successes in n trials is a discrete random variable. You can only have a discrete number of successes in n trials. Um, we call that um, variable x. x is termed a binomial random variable, and its probability distribution, we did probability distributions in section 5.1, um, is now called a binomial distribution. And we'll make a binomial distribution at the end of this lesson. So let's do an example that has a binomial experiment. So this will just give you an idea of what a binomial experiment could be like. And before I give you the formula for calculating a certain number of successes um, in a binomial experiment, um, let's do this question without the formula. That way you hopefully understand where it comes from once I show it to you um, in a second here. So we have an experiment where you roll a die four times. So an experiment with four trials. So this is our number of trials four trials in the experiment. Find the probability of the event that the roll of six will appear exactly twice. So let me explain to you why this is called um, a binomial experiment. Why is this a Bernoulli trial where we're rolling a die and we're trying to figure out the number, we're trying to figure out the probability of rolling two sixes out of four trials. So this is a Bernoulli trial because there are only two possible outcomes. Success is a roll of a six or failure is a roll that is not a six. So each time you roll the die all four times, you're either going to be successful by rolling a six or you're going to fail by not rolling a six. The probability of success for each roll is the same because the trials are independent of each other. Okay? <clears throat> so let's try and figure out um, the probability that our um, discrete random variable x, the number of successes, is equal to two. Let's figure out the probability that um, the number of successes we have is two. Well, let's think about it. We're going to have four rolls of the die. We need um, to get a six twice. That means we need to be successful twice. So let's have um, our first two rolls um, be rolling a six. So first of all, what's the probability of rolling a six? The probability of rolling a six on a standard die that has six sides is one out of six. So to be successful twice, I could roll a six and then roll another six, and then I could fail. And remember, and, when I'm saying and, keep in mind, and means multiply. Don't forget the multiplication principle um, for independent events. So if you want two events to happen in sequence, multiply the probabilities of each event together. Um, so this would be rolling a six, and then rolling a six again. So if I'm going to have four rolls and roll two sixes, that means I must have two rolls that I fail. So what's the probability for my next roll that I'm going to fail? The probability of not rolling a six is five out of six. There are five outcomes on a die that are not a six. And then the last roll would have to be a failure as well. Good. So if I multiplied this out, this would give me the probability of rolling a six, and then rolling a six, and then not rolling a six, and then not rolling a six. That, keep in mind, that's only one possible way, though, that um, this could occur. There are other ways this could occur. I could get a 6, and then not a 6, and then not a 6, and then a 6, or a 6, and then not, and then a 6, and then not. There are different ways that this could happen. So what I have to do, to count the number of possible ways that I could um, have two successes, I'm going to think of it as a combination. So I'll just reveal this down here. The number of ways six could be placed into two of the four entries. So I have four outcomes. I'm going to die four times. How many ways could I choose two of those four to be a success? It doesn't necessarily have to be the first two. It could be any of the two. So how many ways could it be any of the, how many different groups of two could I choose from the four? Well, just do four choose two. 
Okay, so I have to just have to multiply this. I'll do this in a different Multiply this whole thing by four, choose two. So <clears throat> I'm going to now rewrite this. Um, sorry, it's getting pretty multicolored here, but I'm going to rewrite this by simplifying. So that I'll put the four, choose two up front. And then I have one over six times one over six. Well, I can simplify that to one over six squared. And I have five over six times five over six. That's five over six squared. That has been simplified. Uh, this looks a lot nicer. And let me explain to you what these numbers mean. So this combination here represents the number of different ways um, that I can satisfy the criteria of having two successes. How many ways could I choose two of my four trials to be a success? This here, one over six squared. This one over six is the probability of success. And you notice the exponent on it is a two because I'm going to have two successes in my experiment. And then also notice here is the probability of a failure. And the exponent on the failures is a two because if I have four trials and two of them are going to be successful, it means two of them are going to be failures. And let me show you how you can just type all of this on your calculator at once and get your final answer. So let me just bring up the calculator here. So we'll do the next examples a lot quicker than this. Um, this first one's just taking a little while because I'm kind of trying to show you where the formula is going to come from. So if I wanted to type in that whole thing at once, um, I could do four, choose two, and then multiply that by one over six squared times five over six squared. Now give me an answer of 0.1157 if I want to write that as a fraction, math, fraction, enter, 25 over 216 equals 25. Let me just give myself a bit more room here. Twenty-five over two sixteen. So that's the probability of having two successes in four trials. And we took into account um, the different ways it could happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be success, success, failure, failure. Those could happen in different ways. So this takes care of a number of different ways it could happen. And then probability of success to the exponent of the number of successes times probability of failure to the exponent of the number of failures. So this is the formula. Oh, let me. Here it is. Here. This is the formula that we can use um, for any um, binomial experiment to calculate a certain number of successes. So let's look at the formula and let me just reveal to you what the letters all mean. So in a binomial experiment with n trials, so n is the number of trials, this is number of trials, each with a probability of success of p, so this is probability of success, which makes this 1 minus p, the probability of failure. The probability of k successes in n trials is given by this formula. So k is number of successes. So n is the number of trials, k is the number of successes, p is the probability of success, 1 minus p is the probability of failure. Notice on the probability of success, we put an exponent of the number of successes. And on the probability of failure, you put the exponent of n minus k, which, which will give you the number of failures. So let's go ahead and try out using this formula. So use the binomial prob probability distribution formula to find the probability of rolling two ones in six rolls. So I'm going to have six rolls. That's my number of trials. That's my n. I want two of my rolls to be ones. So in this case, rolling a one is going to be considered a success. So I want two successes. Keep in mind, k is the number of successes. So let's go ahead and try and fill in our formula here. So the probability that our number of successes equals two is equal to n choose k, so my number of trials is six. k is the number of successes, I want two successes. So this will take care of the number of different ways, number of different orders it could happen in. Six choose two, how many ways can I choose two of um, my six trials to be successful? Then I need to do the probability of success to the number of, to the number of successes. So probability of success, what's the probability of rolling a one on a die? Well, that's one out of six, because there are six sides on a die. One of the sides is a one. To the exponent of the number of successes, my k value, which is two, times the probability of failure, which is one minus the probability of success. So one minus one over six is five over six. 
Five of the six outcomes I'm going to die are not a one, which means five over six is the probability of failure to the exponent of n minus k, six minus two, which is four, which is the number of failures I'm going to have. If I'm going to have two successes in six trials, I'm going to have four failures. And then once again, you can type this in on the calculator. Six choose two. Multiply that by one over six squared. And multiply that by five over six squared. Or no, five over six, not squared, sorry, to the exponent of four. Because we now have six trials, so two successes, four failures. And our answer is 0 0.2. Let's see if we can write that as a fraction. No, we'll leave it as 0 0.2. It's approximately 0 0.2. So the, pro the probability of probably of having two successes is approximately one out of five. Next example. During the 2010 NHL season, when Sidney Crosby led the NHL in goals and points, so he won the Richard. Actually, I think he tied with Stamkos that year. Um, and he won the uh, Art Ross for points as well. And I believe he won the Hart Trophy that year as well, and the Ted Lindsay. Um, he had a 17% shooting percentage. Determine the probability that in a game where he takes four shots, he gets three goals. So in a game where he has four trials, so here's our N, he gets three goals. And that, we're going to assume getting a goal is a success, so that's okay. And we're going to assume on each shot the probability of success is the same. We're not going to take into account um, where the shot comes from or anything like that. <laughs> so we're going to make those assumptions so that we can use the, um, the binomial distribution formula here. So the probability of him having three successes out of four trials, I have to do four, choose three to figure out the number of ways I could choose three of my four shots to be successful times the probability of success, which is right here. Here's my P value, 0 0.17, to the exponent of the number of successes, my K value, three, times the probability of failure. So one minus P should be 83%, 0 0.83, to the exponent of, he's going to have one failure, 4 minus 3 is 1. Let's type this in. Well, 4 choose 3 is 4, so I'll just do 4 times 0 0.17 to the 3 times 0 0.83 to the 1. And I get 0 0.016. Let's see if we can write that as a fraction. No, we'll just leave it as 0 0.016. 0 0.016, approximately. So there's approximately a 1.6% chance um, that he'll get a hat trick if he takes four shots in a game, based on his shooting percentage from 2010. Last example, we're actually going to make a binomial probability distribution for this one. And keep in mind when we do a probability distribution, we're going to find all of the possible outcomes for our discrete random variable and find the probability of each of those outcomes. So a basketball player has three shots in a free throw competition. So they're taking three shots. There's our number of trials, three shots. Historically, the player has a probability of 65% of scoring on a free throw. And we're going to assume that probability, probability stays constant for each free throw. Determine the probability distribution for the number of free throws made. So we're going to make the binomial probability distribution. We're going to figure out the number of um, the probability for the number of successful free throw attempts he makes. So if he takes three shots, we need to consider all of the possible outcomes. On three shots, how many successful free throws could he make? He could make none of the three, one, two, or he could make all three of the shots. Now we need to find the probability of each of these happening. Keep in mind our probability of success is 65. So that's our p value, which means our failure would be one minus. Um, 0 0.65 would be 0 0.35. So the probability of making 0. So this is our number of successes for this one. This is our k value, probability of 0. Start off with how many ways could I choose 0 from 3 attempts, so 3 to 0, which is just 1, um, times the probability of success, which is 0 0.65, to the exponent of k, 0, because he's going to have 0 successes, times the probability of failure, to the number of failures he's going to have. He's going to have zero successes. He's going to have three failures. Three minus zero is three. Then we'll do this. Find the probability of him having one, making one out of three free throws. So it could be three. Choose one will tell us the number of ways we could choose one of the three um, shots to be successful. 
times the probability of success to the number of successes times the probability of failure to the number of failures. If he's going to have one success out of three, he's going to have two failures. Probability of him being successful twice, probably of him making two free throws, three choose twos, number of ways I could choose two of my three free throws to be successful, times probability of success to the number of successes, times probability of failure to the number of failures. And lastly, all three are successful. How many ways could that happen? Three choose three, which is just one. Probability of success to the number of successes, probability of failure to the number of failures. And then we would go ahead and evaluate all of those. And here are the actual probabilities evaluated for each of those. I'm not going to go through writing those out on the calculator. Those would be our probabilities. And then you might remember from section 5.1, um, I often asked you to calculate um, expected number of, um, you know, whatever the ran discrete random variable was. So in this case, find the expected number of free throws he would make in a competition where he takes three shots. And hopefully you remember the formula right here. The expected number is equal to the sum of x times the probability of x. So what I would have to do is do 0 times the probability. I'd have to do 0 times the probability of 0, plus 1 times the probability of 1, plus 2 times the probability of 2, plus 3 times the probability of 3. And if we did that, we would get 1.95. We'd expect them to make 1.95 or approximately 2 out of the 3 free throws. The nice thing about binomial experiments is that you don't have to go through all of those calculations. You can simply just go ahead and use this formula. Keep in mind, this only works for a binomial experiment. The expected value can be calculated just by doing n times p, where n is the number of trials, p is the probability of success. So in this case, the expected number of successes, or expected number of free throws made, we can just use n times p. So the number of trials is 3, the probability of success, was 0 0.65, and if we do 3 times 0 0.65, we should get 1.95. Let's try it. 3 times 0 0.65, and we get the same answer, 1.95. So keep, keep in mind you can only use this formula for binomial experiments when calculating expected values. If it's not a binomial experiment and you have a probability distribution, you'll have to use this formula here where you find the product um, for each value of x and its probability, and then add them all together. And that's it for this lesson. Make sure you get the worksheet from jensenmath.ca. Try it out. Let me know if you have any questions.